The title of the exhibition is Gulia Get Up, Kaligul, Place of Children, Always, Ever, Continuously, which means it's always been. And the reason why I wanted to focus on what it used to be is because it's gone, because it's all gone. So I, I want to bring it back. I wasn't sure whether to, to do it because I've, I've just been so busy for the last couple of years and I was kind of a little bit worn out but then I thought well there's never been an Indigenous artist do the tilt and, and I thought it's such a significant place and I thought it, it, everybody else has given their perspective on what the place is about and what the place meant and the, I mean, the foundation stone is in the Noongar people. So basically it was my extraordinary need to educate people <laughs> about, about my people. Um, whenever there's an opportunity to make a difference and to bring that information to the wider public, I have to go with it. I've been doing it for a long, 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 long time and I think that was more than more the catalyst for me than anything else because it just seemed unfair that it had this big Wadjala history and and it was all about the buildings and about the built environment and nothing much about the natural environment or the people who came first, you know, so it was it was a little bit selfish on my part to take it on because I didn't know what I was going to do, no clue. Um, I just thought, okay, well, here's an opportunity to um, to inform uh, the wider community about uh, about the site. This is a net, a fishing net. Um, which some of the some of the Noongars used in different areas. It's the muslin has been dyed with uh, belga resin and mary resin, which is um, the red gum tree and the black boy. And this is shell, which is could be mussel or oyster. And um, uh, there used to be um, mussel beds close by. So we've uh, hand stitched. Um, these little fragments of shell on to depict you know what used to be there. Inside there's seagrass balls because Heathcote was known for its quite significant seagrass beds and the mullet feed on seagrass. The mullet was the one significant food that they could have all year round pretty much. I did a lot of research the more I got into it, the more I thought, I really need to just focus on pre-colonisation because I've, um, there's too much angst in dealing with the, the, the newcomers, let's say, um, and what happened immediately after um, Stirling, you know, landed at Point Heathcote. So I, I didn't want to focus on, on that negativity. I've been doing that all my 26 years of my arts career and, and, it, and it was tearing me apart. So I thought, no, this is what we used to have. I'll make, um, it'll be symbolic of what, how it was before the white man came. And there'll be small references to post-colonisation. That's why it's kind of like um, pre-colonisation first contact. Zamia palms are really important. I wanted to use them because there's two big ones on the site, on the Heathcote site, and, and I thought that was really important because they're important to us and they take a long time to grow and they're quite large, the ones on, at Heathcote. So they would have been there pre-colonisation for sure. They can be a, um, 
a symbol of our, our long lasting presence on the land. You know, that's pretty much what they, they'll be. For a place to be called Place of Children, that, that is a pretty significant place to Aboriginal people. And um, all the activities that took place were quite vast. I mean, it, was, it would have been a hub. The history here is so rich and um, so amazing. And, and that kind of spurred me on. The name will always be what we know it as, not as the first gardens, you know, that Stirling set up or um, not as um, where the city of Perth was going to be. It's not about the uh, mental health facility that it became and it's not about it being what it is today. It's about it being this amazing place, which is a place of children where obviously the kids used to play. There were lots of waterways through there. There were creeks coming off the off the point. It was an amazing place and it was very high. So it looked over Kings Park, looked directly to Kings Park and all of the landmarks and the confluence of the Melville waters and the Swan River going into Canning, the Canning River were significant for, for everyday life as you know, with, for the Noongar people there, for the Wadjuk people. This is Heathcote Art Gallery and Museum. I want to put us back in that in a positive way, almost like a memory. It's, it's about memory, really, cultural memory. I think this is why I'm getting so much more involved in um, community and culture, and really the tilt is gonna be the last major exhibition I do. It'll be, this is it. Um, because I have to focus on community and culture and um, I want to learn language and I want to show my grandkids. I, I need the time to spend to bring everything I know to them before it's too late. You know, when you, when you think about the name Gulagata, a place of children, and you can almost hear the laughter of the children, you know, and, and that galvanises me. I mean, it's confronting, it's always confronting, but it needs to be told, because people forget that we were there first, and we had an amazing life on these sites. What I've got in my head and heart, I'm just gonna go with it. There's a story to tell, and I'm going to tell it in the way I want to tell it as an artist and as a Noongar, yeah.